So this wasn't the video I had originally planned to make today, but this is just the way part of farming. Things don't always go to plan. Uh, as the title would have described, our quad is uh, has just let me down. Um, an extremely reliable quad, as I said before. You might have seen videos in this quad. This is the most important thing to me on the farm. It's the, definitely one of the handiest things on the farm. Because our farm is now one, we have another farm here, which I am here at the moment, which is only a short distance over the road, but the road we have to go is an absolute disgrace. That's what it is. It's an absolute mess. Um, it's a public road, yes. Um, but the only way is, a tr even a tractor, it's ferocious, hard, even machinery and things. Now, a neighbor of ours, um, who was raising gravel there recently, done a, a great job on it um, out of his own pocket just to fix it up. We have no gravel, that's the problem. There's not a, not a pick of gravel on this entire farm. Cannot get shale anywhere. Um, so this lad was raising gravel and he had the best shale I've ever seen. Real nice broken up stuff and it made a great job of the road. But he shouldn't have to do it. Um, the council won't even drive over it. They won't even open up tracks at the water off the road. They won't, they won't invest a penny in it. Um, then they'll come knocking on your door when election time comes and uh, asking, is there anything you want? It's just one of those things. All I'll say in it is we all pay our road tax. Um, I pay my road tax, my wife pays it, my family pay it and all the cars. We should see some benefit to it. Rural places like this, which isn't even that rural, roads have a massive importance. Like this little road, for instance, joins two very busy roads and would be a hell of a shortcut for me going to my local co-op and um, it would li literally um, take maybe four miles off my journey instead of having to do a loop around um, to avoid it because it's just you can't just drive it you could drive it but you will damage your vehicle and um, the holes are that deep and it's just pure muck and dirt it's just never ever seen tar in the last at least 40 years plus so that's just one of those things so that's why the quad is just great um, it's great for nipping over here, I can be over here in a few minutes and get my jobs done. It saves me an awful lot of time. I don't use that much on the home farm maybe, but over here, every day it's over here with me. So what's gone wrong? Well, I suppose I might have just show you. Turn on your ignition. She's in neutral. Press the button. And all you hear is a clicking noise. So that, uh, is quite a common thing in quads um, and uh, I have a fair idea what it is. It's definitely starter related. So it's either a solunite, a starter relay or the starter itself. Um, it could even be a bad terminal on the battery. I'll not know until I get it home. I have to take the box off the back, take the seat off and have a good look underneath and see is there anything obvious that sticks out. But my inkling is it's either a solunite or it's a starter. It's one or the other. So I'd say I'm going to have to do a run this morning and try to get, try to get it sorted because I hate to do it at my quad because I carry meal to my calves and uh, quite a distance and I don't want to have to start carrying that by hand. Lucky enough though, there is a pull start on all these quads. It's in behind a, a cover here. So there it is there, just sticking out. Put it this way, um, my father used this quad as well. It's kind of, uh, gets him out of the house. He's, look at my father's 86 years old and this here gets him out of his house and go for his wee spin every so often, every couple of days. and. It works great for him. He loves he loves going for them little bits of outings and gets to look around the cattle and things. And I'm glad that he's able to get out on this. So it's fine for me. I can pull this start and get her going. But if he was out and about, there's no way he'd get that going because what happens is there's so much compression in that engine. It is a 500 cc. When you push it, when you pull it, it can snap back and it actually could could severely hurt your hand if not break your fingers. Um, so you have to be really careful uh, when you're doing it. So it's definitely not something he'd be fit to do. So that's why I need to get this home. Get it taken apart and get it fixed. So with the seat and the box gone, um, just having a quick look here now. Okay, so the battery, I took that battery out. Um, we serviced the quad about two, three weeks ago and I took the battery out, what I always do, and I always clean down the terminals and sand down all the, all the connections. 
and put a little bit of contact grease on them as well. Um, so that's really clean. I don't see any issues there. Nothing's loose. Um, fuses are in here. Again, we've been through them and I've looked. There's no problem with fuses. Uh, it's not really an issue you'd have generally with fuses um, because you'd either have nothing or you'd have everything, if that makes sense. Um, so the next thing um, which would be a big suspect would be this starter solenite. Um, this starter solenite can give trouble on them, can give trouble on anything. It's usually the first thing to go. Um, there's a couple of ways of testing this. Multimeter is always the best way. So you put your multimeter on. Turn on your ignition. Make sure the quad is in neutral. Yeah, quad's in neutral. Ignition on. So you get your... I don't know if you can see that there now at the moment. So we put this on the... It's a bit tricky doing it with, with one hand. But we put that on there now. You can see it's it not. So we put it on here. We should get 12 volts. There we are, we're 12.8 volts. So that's okay. When we go over this side, we should really get nothing. And that's what we're getting. So when we hit our starter button, that should go up to 12 volts. We'll get our click, but we are getting our voltage. So we're getting our click, and then we get our voltage. We take our hand then off the switch, it's back down to zero. So that tells me that that solenite is okay. There doesn't need to be anything done to that because it is doing its job and um, another way to check that without a multimeter would be to get a wrench and I'm not advising you do this but a lot of people do get a wrench get a screwdriver and just cross the two terminals and um, and that if that doesn't start the quad then you know there's nothing wrong with the solenite so that's the solenite eliminator so that's generally what I thought it actually was that was causing the problem now I know that is actually a little bit more serious. It must be down in the starter motor because everything's going right here and it's getting power and it's not turning over. So it has to be the starter motor. It's in here under this cover. So the first thing we do, we move this flap. I have to tie it up out of the way here because I have a cable tie because we're missing a screw here at the top. Um, I rather have a cable tie because that means I can lift it up and down without having to remove screws and things to get pulling this start. So it works better just with a cable tie, just on the top one. The rest of them are all held together with the original um fixings now all we have here is we have two 10 mil nuts that we need to remove okay so we have our starter motor in this case this starter motor is a Miss Shuba. Um, they're a quite a dear um, starter motor. They're a good one. And that would be the original one that would have come on this quad. Um, I know that they are supposed to be really, really expensive. So I'm hoping that all we need to get done with this here is to remove it and um, to get it rebuilt. Rudden Electronics, uh, they're based in the Lavi Inn, which is basically on the Baileybird Cavern Road. So I rung them about an hour ago and I told them the situation and they know me, um, I get on well with them, done a lot of work for me in the past and um, they know that I really need my quad, I need it working. So what I'm going to do, it's about a 40 minute drive from here, I'm going to leave it with them, I'm going to wait outside for about an hour while they rebuild it for me and uh, that way I'll have it home and I'll have to go back and forth and back and forth. Um, I don't mind waiting the hour, at least then when I get it home, the quad's fixed, it's a job off the list. Another way to check your starter motor, you hit your button, it's clicking now at the moment, just get a wrench, give it a wee tap. There we go. Bingo. There she goes. So all it's doing really is sticking. So we'll take this off now and bring it away to get it refurbished.
Okay. Okay, so we're off to get this fixed. The starter's with me. And to be honest with you, torn the rotor there. I forgot to mention earlier on, when you turn the, the, the rotor that's inside the starter, it doesn't feel right. It's got very crunchy and it should be nice and smooth. So um, there's definitely something going on in there. Um, anyway, we know we'll get it sorted. Look at, hopefully it doesn't need a new one. I don't think it does. Um, you should be able to fully rebuild that. Uh, it'll only be a fraction of what it would cost to replace it new. And we definitely don't want to be doing that. Um, I don't think I've ever done the starter on this one. I've done the starter on the last Honda that we had. It's common enough for them to go. Um, uh, but look at that, that quad. We bought that quad um, in 2010. It's an 09 quad. It was an X demo and it had uh, about 300 hours in it when we bought it. Um, there's 3,400 hours I think on it now. I think that's in and around what's on it. So it's a nice little bit of hours. It's not too bad. You have to understand it's a 10 year old quad. But there are hours that haven't been abused, so I'm comfortable enough to keep her for another good while yet. Um, like she hasn't seen any abuse. And most of them hours are just from driving, not from doing any work. As you see, we only have a trailer for the back of it, and um, a bit of spray and things like that, but nothing, she's not really pulling any major weight. Yes, down the line, I would love probably to get a sower for it. Um, of some sort, maybe, we'll see. Uh, that's something probably we will get down the line. Another thing I'd like to get probably a top getting a weed liquor Either a weed liquor or a, an actual boom for the sprayer that we have and um, to put a boom on the one that we have We have to change the pump so it's probably not worthwhile doing that We probably just safer buying trying to find a good package deal out there sell our own sprayer Which is which is hundred percent just sell our own sprayer get a good package deal hopefully and um, buy one with a tank and boom and all all in one and that way it'll probably actually work out cheaper so that's it dropped in here we're just at Rudden auto electrics here in cavan um just that's been dropped in now he's working on it he said about an hour's time he'll have it ready so i'll just sit here and be patient and hopefully we'll have it home with us all fixed up and we'll not have to put a new one into it That must be an hour now. It's been a ten minutes. So we're back in. All fixed. So don't allow anyone on the premises, um, especially not in the waiting rooms. You can understand COVID. Um, that's a good thing. Um, so we waited outside and about an hour, a little less maybe. Um, he has the whole thing fixed. Now we compared the prices to what a new one would be and it cost a quarter exactly a quarter of the price of a new one and you see there's new brushes new everything put into it it should be perfectly good there is a little bit of wear in it he said um that really can't be fixed but it's very minimal and it'll last for an awful long time before you'll have any trouble with it he says it could outlast the pod um it's just a tiny tiny little bit so let's get it home get it on We'll have it all done for dinner time, and at least that's that job fixed. Okay, so we're back. Let's get this fitted now.
Now, the moment of truth, and I have not tested this. Anything, Hudson? Anything is fixed, yeah? So that's it all back in action now, all fixed. Let's get these things done when they're broken, just fix it because if, it, if you let it sit any time at all, it's just gonna become a nuisance and um, you just keep putting it off and putting it off. So you might as well just take the time, go and get it fixed and just be done with it. So it's fixed. The job ticked off the list. At least we know now it's gonna be reliable if it goes anywhere or if my father takes it anywhere, it's not gonna stop on the road on them. Um, so that's it folks. Uh, as always, thanks for watching our channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, leave a comment down below. We'll always try to get back to them. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook um, as usual. The links is in the description below, how to get to there. And uh, until the next one, we'll talk to you again.